I feel it in my bones you're about to go I feel it in the wind you're about to ride in You said that you would pour your spirit out You said that you would fall on sons and daughters So come and blow on through Spirit move We're ready for you So come and blow on through Come and do What only you can do So come and blow on through Oh
There's this show on public TV. It's called This Old House or Ask This Old House. And and it's an interesting show. There's four or five contractors, uh, middle-aged guys who are pros in their field of like plumbing and like outdoor millwork and irrigation and electric and rebuilding framing. And they always have an element of their show where they're, they're using some weird tool, some weird device, and they're guessing um, what it is, what it could be used for. And they act like they don't know. I'm sure they, they, all, they all know, but it's specific to one of their areas. And um, it, it turns into almost like a whose line is it anyway sketch where they're using this weird prop to do different things. I, I was thinking about that and thinking about worship. I've got my own today. Maybe you've never seen one of these before. It's like a green worm, the plastic thing and a string attached. <laughs> um, yeah, the, on their show, they would be like, okay, that's obviously a, a disguise. Or it's uh, some kind of earpiece, or maybe it's uh, it's a hat with a tassel. This is the kind of thing <laughs> that they would do. Um, this is uh, called a dampet. It's a humidifier for acoustic instruments: bass, cello, acoustic guitars, acoustic instruments. You dip this in water, you squeeze it out, and then you stick it in the tone hole of the guitar, and then slide this underneath the strings. And it keeps the guitar humidified, especially on those dry winter months. If you don't know what this is, you just don't really. Uh, appreciate it. And I was thinking about that with regard to worship. Sometimes we overcomplicate things. Um, (laughs) Things don't make sense to us because we don't really understand it. Well, today we are looking at worship and the the picture of of worship that God desires for us. Um, We're going to be in John chapter 4 today. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for... um, the people watching online, Lord, I just pray that as I speak, you speak through me. Lord, um, have these be your words, not my words. Um, Lord, help us to experience more of you. Help us to worship in spirit and truth. So John chapter 4, I'm going to summarize these first 20 verses very quickly. I'll give you a little background. This is early in Jesus' ministry. He's starting to, he's done the the water to wine thing at the wedding. Um, Nicodemus has come to visit him and shared, there's like that most famous passage in all the Bible, John 3.16, God so loved the world, he sent Jesus, he sent his son. Um, That's happened. And there's, he's been visited by John's uh, disciples, there's some confusion. So he's got the, the Pharisees coming to ask him questions. John's disciples are asking him questions. He's like, maybe it's time for a geographic change to set up home base. And so um, biblical scholars, historians think he say, hey, this is now the time he went to Capernaum to set up uh, a new, again, headquarters, if you will. And it says he had to cut through Samaria. Had to is an interesting verb choice there because he probably could have gone around. A lot of Jews did go around. They avoided Samaria. Think about this area in your neighborhood uh, or your where you live it, that is a sketchy part of town. It's the, the hood, if you will. You avoid that. Um, that's how the Jews viewed this area. But it says Jesus went through town. And it's about noon where our story opens up at the beginning of chapter 4. And he sends the guys in the town, hey, guys, go get us some fish and chips. I'm going to sit here by the well and get a drink. Woman comes along. And then here we go with this interaction And it's interesting, the woman by the well, you've maybe heard this preached on before. There's so much here. I'm really going to just summarize this story, but Jesus asks her for a drink. And we already know there's something different about this woman because women in biblical times did go to get water. They usually went in the morning or in the evening, not in the heat of the day. This woman's probably an outcast for some reason, and that's why she's coming in the heat of the day. Jesus, being a Jew, wouldn't have talked to her. Jesus, being a rabbi, wouldn't have talked to her, especially a woman of ill repute as uh, the story unfolds. So he asks her for a drink and her mind is blown. She's like, what in the world? Why are you a Jew asking for me, uh, from me a Samaritan a drink? And <laughs> he then says uh, a little Jesus wisdom to her. He says, you know, if you knew who was asking you for a drink, you would have asked me to give you living water. I don't know if you've ever had one of these conversations with your spouse or a coworker or a child where you think you're talking about the same topic, but you're really talking past each other. That's what's happening right now in real time for her. And so she's focused on this, this, uh, <clears throat> this living water, but she's focused it in, in the physical. Jesus is talking about a spiritual need she has, just like Nicodemus from the chapter before. He says, you got to be born again. And Nicodemus was hung up on the physical being born again piece, wasn't recognizing the spiritual thing that Jesus was talking about. So you've got really two very different people, uh, a commonly educated person and a scholar. Again, Jesus is showing the, the need that we all have, the spiritual need that needs to be met. 
He says, no, 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 no. Let me try, let me try this a different way. You're, you're still thinking about the bucket and the well. If you drink that water, you're going to get thirsty again. The water I give, you'll never thirst again. This is living water. This leads to eternal life. Now she's like, okay, you got my attention. I'm sick of coming to get water. How do I get it? And he's like, okay, go get your husband and come back. Things turn a little awkward at this point because she's like, I, I, I don't have a husband. And Jesus says, you're right. You've had five husbands. The guy you're hanging out with now, you're living with, you're sleeping with, not your husband. And then she's like, okay, uh, this is awkward. I want to change topics. Um, so she's like, okay, what's the political issue of the day? What's going to get him fired up? How do I get out of this? Um, oh, 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 worship. Yeah, worship. People get mad about worship. Um, hey, my people say we got to worship on the mountain. Your people say we got to worship in Jerusalem. What say you? And Jesus, because he's Jesus, meets us right where we're at. He uh, says, okay, we can, we can talk about this spiritual condition through worship. And that's where we're going to pick up our story today. This is John chapter 4, verse 21. And um, this is Jesus' response. I'm going to read the whole thing, and then I'm going to break it down. He says, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know. For salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For they are the kind of worshiper the Father seeks. Oh, I love that passage. There's so much. So buckle in because we're going to go fast. Verse 21 and 22, he says, um, hey, where, where, she says, where do we worship? And he says, okay, well, it doesn't matter if you worship on the mountain or in Jerusalem. Um, because we're going to worship in spirit and truth. You can worship anywhere. If you've been hanging out with me the last, oh man, couple months, you know, my venue for worship has changed, but it doesn't matter because uh, we're not bound to a location. It's not about uh, a pretty church building or a garage or caribou. You can worship wherever you are because where, where you are, that's where the spirit of the Lord is. It's a new age, it's a new time. That's what Jesus is talking about. He, he also says, um, he, he doesn't, he doesn't want empty worship. Um, this has to be truthful worship. You know, um, I, I was thinking about that, and there's a passage in Malachi, kind of leans into both 21 and verse 21 and 22. Um, God gets upset at these priests because they're bringing lame animals. During the, in the sacrifice system, which is currently in this story here, in effect too, um, you're supposed to bring your first fruits or your, the best of your crop, the best of your field, your unblemished animals. These priests were bringing blind and gimpy, lame animals. And he's like, just shut the doors. Uh, I don't want your, your, these sacrifices. Um, a time's coming when pure worship will be offered and the nations will worship me. It's Malachi around verse 9 and 10. It's, it's a beautiful passage. And I think it's being fulfilled right here in Jesus' words. He's like, it doesn't matter if you're on the mountain, wherever you are, people are going to worship me in spirit and in truth. The third part, getting to verse 22 there, is also when to worship. It, it, there's the old joke about Christmas and Easter only CEO Christians, Christmas, Easter only Christians. We're coming up to some pretty significant time in the, in the church calendar, a time that we love to celebrate um, his death, burial, resurrection. Uh, but it's not just about a certain day, a certain holiday, especially for the Jews. They had festivals upon festivals, or, you know, Passover, Passover and all the other, the other different festivals they'd come to celebrate the Lord. But he's not, he's like, it's not just about a certain time. The time to worship is now. A time is coming and has now come because Jesus is present. You don't have to wait till Easter to worship. You can worship um, with your life right here and right now. I think, I love the way that Eugene Peterson puts it. I'm going to paraphrase uh, a paraphrase version of the Bible. Um, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, in this Bible I grew up reading, it says, present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Present your bodies, who you are, your gifts, your talents to God in worship. Eugene Peterson's version says, offer your lives as worship to God. Offer your lives as sacrifices to God. You're waking up, you're going out, you're, you're, you're walking around lives, your everyday life to God. Everything you do is worship. Right here, right now is the time to worship. And then the passage I want to spend a part I want to spend just a few minutes with is when he says that we're supposed to worship in spirit and in truth. Yet a time is coming and has now come when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. That's the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. How, how do you do that? 
spirit and truth. The word spirit uh, is the word pneuma. We, we get the word wind or air, uh, like a pneumatic drill. Um, that's the, the thing that empowers the spirit inside of us, our, our soul. We, a few weeks ago, we talked about our IP, our inner person. That's what we're talking about here. This is not the Holy Spirit. This is who you are without the, the meat and bones, right? Your soul, your spirit. You've got to worship him in spirit. I, I like to think about this as your passions, um, your emotions. Um, you, you can't worship God in, in a vacuum. It's, it's, worship is, is a, a passionate st- uh, thing. It's not just living in this little box. Um, it, when you think about a picture of true worship, I, I don't think that you, th- you think of this very rigid format. Or maybe you do. But again, there has to be passion. There has to be. Without passion, I don't believe there can be worship. Um, I, I think about that, that passage in 1 Corinthians 13. I think it's like the very first um, verse. It talks about that uh, without love, we're just a clanging symbol. We can go through the, the, the motions, um, uh, uh, rote memorization and routine and ritual, but again, we've got to love it. And you can love God absolutely passionately through tradition and um, routine, but there has to be love. There has to be that passion, that spirit that is... Uh, informed by truth. And so there's two parts. There's spirit and truth. The truth, again, what is truth? John, in in the book of John, uh, John refers to Jesus as the truth. Uh, In Greek, that's aletheia. He is the truth. So when it says that the word became flesh, it it was the truth became flesh in John uh, 1.1. We can't just... Here's what happens. If you don't know the truth about who God is from this, this book... It just becomes emotionalism, just hype, right? But if you go all the other way and make it all about knowledge, you just know a lot of information about God. It, it has to work together. Well, my favorite radio host, he's a devout Jew, he, he said years ago, I heard him, and it wasn't anything that's particularly profound. I guess I just needed to hear it at this time. He, he said that we connect with God with the way that he designed us the way that we're wired. So if you're an artist, you're going to connect with him through art or music, musician, it's going to be through music. If you're an academic, it's, of course it's going to be through God's word, but still our worship has to be. It's very clear from the lips of Jesus, spirit and truth. That truth informs our spirit. Our spirit is informed by that truth and they work together. Otherwise it becomes rote memorization and ritual or emotionalism, empty emotionalism. I, I love this passage because it creates this holistic picture of worship. It's not just your head. It's not just your heart, not just your soul. It's both working together. And here's my favorite part about it is that's the kind of worshipers the Father is seeking. That's the kind of worshipers the Father is seeking. We can be worshipers that he, he wants to spend time with, that, he, that we can connect with him uh, if we worship him in this way. Uh, that's where I want to turn the corner and just talk for a moment about this ministry. Um, you've been watching for the last couple months sort of develop here, and it's kind of old but kind of new at the same time. In 2011, some dear friends and I, some of which you've seen uh, play viola and bass for us and trumpet, we started a nonprofit called Sound of Hope Ministries, and we ended up going to Belize together to serve the Lord there to worship and hopefully um, help others worship. Well, Fast forward here to 2019, and Sound of Hope still has some missionaries that are part of our organization serving in Belize, but now Sound of Hope is now operating as an umbrella organization over what we do here in the shop. And as I think about spirit and truth worshipers, that's the kind of community I want to be part of. That's the kind of community I I want to be involved in creating and encouraging, a a place where it ignites the worship, the passionate worship of God in others. If you've been watching for the last few weeks, um, and you supported us, I, I thank you. If you've been watching for the last few weeks, just going, what is this all about? <laughs> You're not alone. We're figuring it out together. But um, my heart, my goal, my, my vision and I, uh, that I, I, I believe is from the Lord is to create a virtual, kind of a hybrid community, a virtual community um, where you you're, might be watching in a different state or a different country, even at different times of the day. But you take this this experience and make it part of your your daily walk. Make it part of your church. Maybe you're in between churches. This can be your virtual and not virtual church family. I believe that community is so very important. And I hope that as we continue to to meet and worship and read God's word together, we we learn the truth of who he is, but we are 
leaning into the Spirit, having a, an experience of Him, I hope that blogs will start. Uh, I hope that we will start a writing group of these musicians where we're writing our own songs. I hope that Bible studies will start. And I don't care if this becomes a, a group of 15 or 100 or more than that or less than that. It will develop organically, but I'm excited to be part of a community that truly wants to go after igniting a passion for worship um, in others, Uh, igniting a passion for worship of God in in people around the globe. If that's something that you want to be part of, I encourage you to join us Sunday mornings or Sunday afternoons. We've been doing this again at different times on Sunday, trying to figure out when most people are online and then rebroadcasting on Wednesdays. If you'd like to be involved in some capacity in this ministry, please direct message me. You can send me a a message through Facebook or uh, through email chaslouder at gmail.com. One final thought. It says that we need to worship God in, in the spirit because he's spirit. We need to worship Him in spirit and truth. That's what our our theme has been today. As we close, so many times that pendulum swings one way or the other, and we don't tend to get it, right? It's like this apparatus that doesn't make any sense to us, right? But, (laughs) But we are worshiping God in spirit because He is spirit. So as we close um, our time together, we're going to do a couple more songs in this first one. I, I'm going to close uh, this time with a an illustration uh, about finance, but this has nothing to do with money. It's just an illustration that I think really really is helpful. It's from Dave Ramsey. He was talking about giving, right? And he says, if you've got your hand, let's say it's got money, right, in there, and you got your hand t- closed tight, yeah, you're not going to lose your money, right? But you're also not going to be able to give or bless those around you. And so if you open up your hand, yes, the money flows out to friends, to family, to ministries that you support, <laughs> But also, as that money goes out, the Lord's able to give you more. And I think about worship, and, and I think about this, right? We don't do a closed hand, but maybe we do a closed posture. Or this, or this, right? It's that closed hand. The Lord wants to give us more. As we close our time together in worship, I, I want to be open to what the Lord wants to do. I want to receive everything I can from the Lord. I want to worship Him with all my heart, mind, and soul, and worship Him with all of my heart. My, Lord, here we are. I, I'm, not, I'm holding nothing back. My heart is open to you. Help me. Help all of us to worship today in spirit and truth.
I'm getting lost in your presence I'm seeing glimpses of heaven Oh, I could stay here forever With my heart, with my heart wide open I'm getting lost in your presence I'm seeing glimpses of heaven Oh, I could stay here forever With my heart, with my heart wide open I'm getting lost in your presence I'm seeing glimpses of heaven Oh, I could stay here forever and ever With my heart, with my heart wide open With my heart wide open I don't want to miss a thing Cause you take what was broken and make it new I'm gonna trust you With my heart, with my heart wide open Whoa. We've got one more song, and this song really gets at the community that I hope that we are working towards building, uh, a community that's worshiping, yes, in spirit and truth, but also uh, leaning into our identity as heirs to a kingdom, the sons and daughters that are so dearly loved. Before he spoke creation, the God of heaven knew our name. Formed in his reflection, we are his glory on display. And his heart is good, he's always kind. With the cross he proved, he's on my side. We are the sons, we are the daughters of God. No matter where we go, we're close to the Father's heart. And though we stumble, he will not let us fall. Forsake his own. We are the sons, we are the daughters of God. His love he lavished on us, he called us children of the King. And in his loving kindness, he chose the lowly and the weak. And his heart is good, he's always kind. With the cross he proved, he's on my side. We are the sons, we are the Daughters of God, no matter where we go, we're close to the Father's heart. And though we stumble, He will not let us fall. We are the Lord's, and He will never forsake His own. We are the sons, we are the daughters of God. We 
When the lies speak louder than the truth Remind me I belong to you When I can't see past the dark of night When the lies speak louder than the truth Remind me I belong to you When I can't see past the dark of night Thank you so much for worshiping with us today. Um, again, if you have any questions or you'd like to be involved in this ministry in some way, send me a direct message on Facebook or to my email, chazlauder at gmail.com. God bless you. Um, we will worship with you next Sunday.